Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So we're getting into mid autumn now and it's towards the end of October in the UK and it's time to plant our garlic and today's video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way we plant our garlic. This is a unique method a lot of people have benefited from the video that I did last year on how I plant my garlic and they've seen the advantages of it and they're going to try it out this year. I've shown you my harvest and, and the garlic that I've managed to achieve using this technique. So keep watching, I'll show you the exact way I grow my garlic and how you can benefit from using this method. So there's a couple of places that I'm going to grow my garlic this year. One is going to be under this arch and the other places are going to be where I had my beans growing. And I'll explain why I'm growing here and why I'm growing under the, where the beans are. And for this bed, the first thing that I'm going to start doing, I had kohlrabi and cabbage brassicas growing here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is there's some dandelions that I'm going to have to take out because even using the cardboard method that I use, these dandelions will push through the cardboard and they'll compete with the garlic. So these perennial weeds need to come out. And you've got to make sure you get the whole tap root with dandelions because they'll just sprout up again if you leave anything behind. And I've got a little bit of couch grass here as well, so this needs to be cut, this needs to come out. So it's just perennial weeds that I'm removing. I mean, we do practice no dig, but these kind of perennial weeds, you need to get rid of them. For most people, they're just going to pop back up unless you get rid of them out. So make sure you get rid of them. Don't think you can mulch these out. It's not going to be easy to mulch them out. It's possible, but it's not easy. So for the average person, make sure you dig them out. I'm, I call myself the average person, so there you go. The interesting thing I want to show you here is I've been talking about this quite a bit when I talk about using radishes as cover crops. Now what I've got here is loads of radishes. I've got radish plants here. So they've grown some really deep tap roots. You can see how thick that, that guy is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my fork and I'm going to cut him off just below soil level so the most of that root has remained under the ground and now I've got this leaf that if I wanted to we could eat this or you can use it as more organic matter to you know to compost in situ so now that radish there is going to rot down in the soil and it's going to improve my soil it's a great way it's a really good technique of improving clay soil using radishes like this and using plants with deep tap roots so that's it now, my bed's prepped. I've got all the perennial weeds out and all these radish leaves that you throw, saw me pull out before, I'm just gonna sprinkle these back onto the bed. They can go back down and they're gonna compost in situ. They're gonna provide food for the soil. Another plant here, just chop that up, there we go. All of these leaves, fine to just leave on the ground. I've even got some vetch here that is just gonna go under the ground as well. Guys, can you all get, get the cardboard? Yeah. Something nearby the pond. So it's time to get my compost on. And this is all chicken compost, straight off my chicken bed, chicken run floor. And that's going on. It's not fully broken down, sort of half broken down. Dave, can you gently spread this on top of the bed for me, please? Use the back of the rake. Use the back of the rake. Just push it forward and back. That's it. Just spread it lightly. Good one. So that just needs spreading on the beds. And then we're getting ready to plant. So all those leaves can go fine straight under that compost. The, all the leaves that we cho chopped off from the bed that they were growing in, they're fine. So you can see the benefit of adding all these wood chips and compost. Look at all these mushrooms that are just growing wild those mushrooms are going to continue breaking down the material that's not fully broken down it's going to turn it into nutrients available for the plants we'll get all that spread all over the beds we've got piles of it i've been piling it up already on this side of the bed as well we've not grown garlic in this bed before i think this is the newest bed that we're growing in so all those annual weeds all those spare leaves, they're just getting covered and they'll get, they can get mulched out, no problem. So I was quite lucky with this cardboard. One of my friends, Mona Nisarsab, he had his house, he had some work done in his house and he dropped off a load of quite nice big boxes for me. 
so we're just going to peel off this cellar tape. Make sure you get the cellar tape because you don't want it to be contributing to the microplastics in the soil. Get rid of all of this. We're just going to cover this whole bed now. Oh, this is a lovely sized box. Look at the size of it. Absolutely brilliant. What is it? There we go. I've got my bed mulch now and it's time to start putting the holes into where I want to make my garlic plantings. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just start cutting in holes and just make them about two inches square and we want them about from the centre of the hole from the centre of the hole to the centre of the hole you want about six inches Once I've made all the holes, I'm going to get planting. It does take a bit of time making the holes, but you're going to make more than that time back once you get to um, weeding and keeping your soil pr protected and fed over the winter because you're not going to lose nutrition to the winter rains and the winter storms. So you're not going to lose any soil to erosion either like this because the soil's covered I want you to measure like this so use the knife and there, that's where the centre of your hole is going to be Just stab it in, cut, stab it in, cut and then open it up you've got your gloves on haven't you That's it. You, babe, you're not going to do some, some as well. Yeah, we'll be able That's too big. That's a big. That hole's a bit too big, okay? So you want to try and keep them at that size. So last year when I was doing this, and the kids were using the knives, people were complaining. That if the kids aren't learning how to use a knife in front of me, then it's an essential skill that I'm teaching them. And it's a good place for them to know, learn how to use it while they're being supervised by me. So someone suggested that we should wet the cardboard first before we put, uh, start making the holes in. Now there's a few problems with that and one of them is that when you're walking about on the cardboard like this you'll end up ripping it and the whole purpose of the, using the cardboard like this is gone um, because it sh you shred it automatically. Another one is you're going to end up sitting in soggy cardboard and that's not what we want, we don't want soggy bottoms. So this is the garlic that I'm going to be planting. And this is ordinary supermarket garlic. It's come from a local grocery shop. I got five kilos for nine pounds. So that's a pretty good bargain for me, I'd say. And I'm gonna get planting now. We've made our holes, all the family got stuck in. And it took us, it took us about 15 minutes to make all the holes. But now we can just start planting now. I'm just gonna wait for the kids to come. So Dave, can you help plant some of this garlic? So when we pick a garlic, we pick the biggest cloves that we can get. And that's two cloves you've got there. So there you go, so split them. So sp pick the biggest cloves because they'll give you the biggest bulbs. And when you plant um, them... Which ones have already been done and which holes have okay. already been done? I've only just done this row. With a garlic bulb, you're going to find the garlic have a pointy end and a flat end. The flat end is the end that goes down and that's where the roots are going to come from. If you left that in a cup of water, then that you'd see roots sprouting from the bottom really quickly and a shoot pointing from the top. So just push it in. And you want to push it, push a bulb. If a bulb is about a depth, so if a bulb is about uh, an inch deep or an inch tall, you want to push that to about double its depth. So about two inches down, you want to push it. And all, because the soil is nice and soft, I can just push the bulb straight down. So that's what I want you guys to do, Thib. I want you to start on that first line down there. Right, on the going this way or go, you go across. Oh, but I want you to start on the very end. So I just. Don't know which No, don't peel anything off. So that applies to go down? Yes, please. Nice. 
So I like planting my garlic just after the first frost. So we had a first frost yesterday and that takes a lot of heat out of the ground. And because it takes a lot of heat out of the ground, the garlic's just going to be a little bit slower germinating. And that's what you want. You want them to get established, but you don't want them to get really tall, really fast. And I've deliberately left a couple of feet at each side of the bed because that's where I'm going to be planting gourds and the smell of the garlic is going to be protecting the gourd plants from pests. If you haven't seen my video on companion planting, uh, it's a really good one to check out. Um, I'll leave a link for it up here. It's full of information about how you can plant vegetables in a way that uses the fr smell of the plants to protect your plants. So do go and check it out, it's really useful. Quite a few people ask me why I don't net my plants and that all the secrets are in that video. So why do we grow garlic like this? Why do we go to all that trouble of cutting holes through the cardboard and covering our soil like this? Now we practice no dig, okay? So we, don't, we generally don't dig our soils unless it's like you saw taking out perennial weeds. And what that does, it protects the soil, it allows organisms to live under the soil, it doesn't disturb mycelium life under there it, it doesn't disturb worms and in, insects it especially if you're using a spade you'll cut end up cutting them in half so there's some of the reasons that we do no dig but when we're growing garlic like this what we do is we're adding a layer of compost which is going to feed the soil so the worms are going to come down if i lift a piece of cardboard now i'd already see worms coming up to the surface and you can see that life already appearing. Normally what a lot of people do is just put compost over the soil and leave it over winter. But that compost erodes, that compost oxidizes. Covering it like this will protect that compost from oxidizing and it'll protect it from eroding and wearing away through the winter weather. Now what's gonna happen is that cardboard's gonna act as a weed barrier. So that cardboard will probably take about six months to break down. And in, the, in that six months, Weeds aren't going to be popping up through underneath and competing with my garlic. And my garlic's going to grow strong and healthy because they're not being com out competed by natural plants that are much more geared to take the nutrition from the soil than they are. So not only does this method feed our soil, it protects our soil and it gives our garlic a weed-free, safe environment to grow in. Now, a few people have asked me, how do I stop the cardboard from moving? There's a few tricks you can use. Now, I've got this piece of wood and what I do on the edges, and, it, and I use it as a footpath. So I'll just, I'm just gonna place that piece of wood over the end, and that's gonna help weigh it down. And I'll keep doing that, I'll put little things to weigh it down. You can take little twigs like this, and especially where you've got two pieces joining together, just peg it in, and it'll act like a peg, and hold it in place, and stop it from moving. But once it starts to rain, and the rain comes down and wets this cardboard, this will hold in place anyway. Or you could try this other trick that I do. I mean, normally I wait for the leaves to come down and fall on, onto this bit of cardboard and then I leave the leaves in place. But I've just cut the grass and I've picked up a load of leaves when I cut the grass. So I'm just gonna chuck that grass over the top. And this will just help weigh everything down in place and keep it in place. So I do this and I've, oh, I've done this for a while. Now that bed's not gonna move anywhere at all. So I did a video on the way we planted garlic last year using this method and the harvest that we've had. Go and check those out. I'll leave links to the videos at the end of this video. But they're absolutely, I mean, you can see the process from um, us planting and all the way through to the harvest and the results that we have. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. I also make videos on Patreon. So if you want to support our channel, that's a great way of supporting our channel. There's loads of bonus content on there. I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.